Hi again, as I said in my previous video, I had to split the video for the UVL 15 watts in two parts because this radio has a lot to offer. So I didn't have the time in the first video to show the CPS and how the programming is done. Uh, so here we are. I have connected the UVL 15W from TYT to my PC, to my laptop. And uh, today we're going to see how the CPS works and the programming of the radio. Uh, I have to say two things. First, this model is not compatible with uh, CHIRP. I hope in the future that it will be. I don't know if someone will be able to work on it, but it would be nice. And also that, uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, the cable for programming this radio came from TYT. The cables that I had and looked alike from other companies or the ones that I made myself, like an FTDI cable, uh, didn't work with this radio and I believe that this is because the serial interface for interfacing with a computer is inside the radio and not on the cable. I'll have to verify that at some point. But the cable that worked was provided by TYT in the box. So if you ever get your hands on this radio, be sure to get also the programming cable just to be safe. Now let's have a look at the CPS. Okay, another surprise that I had uh, when I opened the CPS was that it's written in Qt. Uh, those of you who are programmers, you will know what I'm talking about, uh, which is a cross-platform language and uh, application development platform. Quite interesting. That means that maybe at some point this CPS will be provided for Linux too. Another good thing to happen because we have at some point moved away from Windows. But at the moment, we're stuck with that. So let's see what this CPS has to offer and how the programming is done. So I have connected the, the radio. As you can see, it has already uh, recognized it at COM6. So I'm going to do a first read. OK. And the radio reboots when you read or write the data from the CPS, and let's check all the sections that we have here. So the first one is functions. We have seen, of course, all those settings in the menu of the radio. There's nothing new here. There's nothing that it's here and it's not in the uh, actual radio. So I'm just going to go over them to see quickly what they do, as we did uh, in the radio also. Uh, here is the TRX menu. I have talked about it in the previous video, the four options that we have. Of course, here is the cross-band repeater, and you can select its options below. Squelch level, it's radio-wide. Timeout timer. If we want main channel or last call channel to be activated. When it boots, when we open the radio, what we want to be selected in A, VFO, and B, VFO, okay, obviously. Squelch state elimination is here. Power save is over here. It has those options and when it will start to activate. This is about the NOAA channels over here. As I said also in the operating system of the radio, it doesn't have them by name, but uh, those of you that use them, you will know what to do here. Tone burst and scan options as we show also in the menu. Here are the display functions. We have nine levels of brightness for the display. Auto dimmer, of course, right now I have it to uh, off because I don't want the display to go out during the video. But you can set it to, for instance, auto one, which means that after the delay that is set here, the brightness will drop to 1, which is a good thing to preserve your battery. Uh, and this is if the screen will uh, light on or off during RX and TX. The power and display, as we saw on the boot of the radio, you can display all those information at the same time or maybe keep some of them. 
it's not display one of those, it's displaying all of those, or you can just remove one of them, or all of them if you want. Okay, obviously, other settings, uh, language, Chinese and English, memory display mode, menu exit timer, the battery display type. You can see on the video on the right, the battery is alternating between icon and voltage. RX LED and signal strength. Yes, we have it on. Here are the sounds. The AI Vox, which I have it to off, of course. The key beep sound, of course, again, I have it to off. Uh, no, we we'll leave this to off too. Mic gain, low, mid, high. And here are all the keyboard shortcuts that you can set. As we show in the previous video, 16 keyboard shortcuts, most of them for long pressing the numbers here. And also the two side keys and the top key, the orange top key that is next to the antenna. Uh, as you can see, I haven't set them all because <laughs> for me, at least, I will forget them after a while. So I just set some of them and uh, hope to remember them to use them. So those options are here, a lot of them, plenty to choose of. We saw what each one of them does. I will have to write to TYT because I think they should add another shortcut here, and that is the GPS switch. Yes, I will, I will have to tell them that. It would be nice to have the GPS switch in one of those uh, shortcuts. Of course, again, the auto lock of the keyboard, uh, what we want to be locked when it activates. And let's go to the channels. Here I have passed my test channels as I usually do. Let's have a look. Here are the frequencies, TX, RX and TX frequencies. Of course, it's not different here, so of course there's no point for the TX frequency to be active. But if I go here and select, for instance, uh, split, this will activate so I will be able to enter a totally different frequency. Uh, or I can just activate the offset, uh, minus or plus, and then this offset here will be used. Okay, uh, that's known stuff, nothing strange, classic programming radio uh, procedure. Top around or reverse, if we want to be active by default in a channel. Again, I don't think there's no need for that. Channel mode. TX power. We saw the power meterings in the previous video. Of course, as I said, because I didn't have the correct adapter, I will do this again in a next video when an adapter arrives for the TNC connector. Here is uh, an option that you can set the channel as RX only. Quite interesting. I mean, I have set this to some of my channels where I just want to listen and I don't want to uh, transmit. Busy lockout. Here you can set the scan flag if you want this channel to be scanned when the radio scans all the channels. It can be skipped or it can be set as priority so it will be scanned first. Scrambler. Okay, again, we have no use for that here. Squelch type. This is where you set if you want a CTCSS code or a DCS code to open your squelch. So, carrier means no code, of course. Tone, as soon as I select it, as you can see, the CTCSS option and the DCS options are activated, and I can change uh, what I want here. And also, the other options are for the signaling, DTMF encoding and decoding, and for those that use this kind of thing. Uh, also, the decoder is off. It's a usual practice. You just encode the tone in the transmission, in your transmission, and you accept every transmission without a code. But, of course, if you need it, you can set also this uh, decoder tone, and then the value here will be activated for you to change. So we set this to off. Uh, this is the polarity for the DTCS signal. We saw that, again, here at Squelch type, for those who use those systems, TTMF, 2-tone or 5-tone. 
and PTT ID, again, it's for the DTMF, to tone decoder and APRS RX. This is for reception of APRS data. If you are in a channel that transmits APRS data and you want them received and decoded, then you have to activate this on this channel. Uh, again, I have to say, just like the radio, and just like I said in the previous video, so far the CPS is very well designed. I have to say that. A lot of options to choose from, and it accompanies the radio as it should. So, this uh, was the memory section of the channels that we can set in the radio and the way that you can program them. Nothing really hard. It's quite easy. Here we have the two VFOs, of course. How do you want them to be set on boot? Nothing special. Again, the same columns as in the memory uh, part. Here we have the two code channels that, as I said, they are like shortcuts. Two shortcuts, one for each VFO to quick access a frequency that you use a lot. Here I have just set some random frequencies. I don't use those. So uh, you can set one frequency for the up VFO and one frequency for the below VFO and change to those frequencies when you need to access them quickly. Let's go to the next section. It's the signaling system. Of course, I'm not going to explain everything here because I don't use it. Again, five tone is for our German friends that use this system in Germany. Two tone and DTMF. Okay. FM radio. This is the commercial FM radio. Here you can set up to 31 memories, 32 to be exact, because it starts from zero. So up to 32 memories. And uh, here also are the basic settings. If you want, you want it to be in VFO, so you can enter the frequency directly or in memory mode where you can use those frequencies here. And another big section, as it is in the menu system of the radio, and we saw this in the previous video. The APRS, a lot of options. And exactly what is needed to be set correctly. So we have our call sign here, the SSID, uh, the icon, primary or alternate. It has two symbols. You can select the primary icon or alternate if you are in a different position. And of course, the icon that will be displayed in the APRS system. And here is the destination. If you're sending the data to a specific uh, colleague or if you're just broadcasting to the APRS network, you can set those settings here. The beacon type, GPS, of course, yes, manual, band ADD, the timers, side tone, if you want to hear, to which channel you want to be transmitted, because you can set eight channels here if you have eight channels in your area. I have only one. Uh, this is the main analog channel for APRS in Greece. So uh, I have set only this at the moment. And uh, here you can set fixed GPS position if you need for a reason to transmit those. The DigiPeter path, it's a common practice to put some values like those over here and the message text that can be shown in the APRS system. And here on the other side, we have the decoder options. When your radio receives APRS data, if you want them to be decoded and displayed in the appropriate section inside the radio. Again, a lot of options, well-built system. Next section is the GPS. We have just a switch on or off. Uh, which kind of GPS do we want to receive? All the pairs are here. You can see GPS, BTS and GLONASS the Russian system. Of course, the time zone that you have to set it to your time zone in your country. And that's it for the GPS and the Bluetooth section. If you want to connect your radio to a Bluetooth speaker, speakerphone or external PTT button. We have seen one of those from another company in a previous video for talking with a Bluetooth PTT in hand. 
So mainly, that's the CPS. There are not hidden functions, at least I haven't found any yet. There are no hidden functions here. We also have the language of the CPS, of course, here, English and Chinese, read and write, tools. Yes, you can also protect your programming if you want with a password, but okay, I don't need to do this now. In the tools, we have a menu that's called Activate Radio. I'm not quite sure what this does yet, and I don't have a reason to mess with it. If I find what this is about, of course, I will inform you. And the next one is the Update Radio, when we have to pass a new firmware. I am expecting a file from TYT. I hope when I receive it to make a video just to show the firmware upgrade for this radio. And let's say we're done with the programming, we can go ahead and write the data back to the radio. A very quick procedure. You just show how quickly it passed all of the data. So basically that's it. As you can see, a well-built CPS that accompanies a well-built radio, very easy to use. Apart from the issue with the cable, that it's not a standard two-pin cable, but maybe it's a dummy cable, so you might not be able to use your old uh, programming cables from other radios. Apart from that, an excellent CPS, an excellent radio to what it offers. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you next time.